And these are five pounds of beans that y'all have picked already? Ten. Ten pounds of beans. Two sacks. No. One, 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 big one bag. One ten pound bag. Great. You ever had oxtail? I had that for the first time at the rodeo. Man. <laughs> yeah, Mark, get your piece. The elixir of the... Any seasoning in there yet? Nope. Not yet. They stir it while it's on. I don't like them in there. Beans? Beans? You just put them in there, put them on there. Oh, uh, they've been on about an hour. Put any seasoning yeah. on no, them? No, they haven't been on an hour. They may have been on the. That thing for an hour. They need some more water in there. It's soft. It's soft. How long have they been on? They need some, they they some more rub, but nothing not much of it out. Um, you know what? I don't know what time we put them on. One, one? It's only three o'clock. So, yeah, but we do want to. I gotta get to check that bottom. You want beer in there? No, I want a water. Pot of water in there, and then I'll put soda in there. Soda. Just Coke, Dr. Pepper, one or two. Across the family, you can risk it all on this side. You're putting raw chicken. Chicken's going on that side. All on the right side. You never. That's the unique part about these cookers. Yeah. So it's going to drip. It's going to drip straight down, yeah. but it's going to be so far away from the beef that you won't have to worry about. You have to worry about crossing. Yeah. That's what I will do. Before I go two chickens wide, I'll put one on the bottom shelf and one on the top shelf, right above it, all the way around, and then I'll go right beside it with the second one and do it, but I'll keep them as far to this side of the cooker as I can. <coughs> but you, you, you know, you're looking, I've got one brisket that's a double brisket up here somewhere, but I can tighten everything over now. Yeah. <coughs> but I won't be any further than this right here with two chickens on the shelves going around over here, so I'm not concerned with cross-contamination because it's not going to drip that way. Okay. And there's a... The size of these chickens. She just ordered a case of chickens. chickens. I don't even know what size they were. Uh, I'm figuring they're going to probably be between three and four pounds. Fryer. Looks like a pretty good size chicken. One of the things I do when I'm doing this, and because we're cooking whole chickens, is I'll just pull, make sure all the gizzards and stuff are out, and then I'll just pull all the excess fat that I see and just kind of stick it over to the side out of the way. Uh, <coughs> Down some, uh, nope. We're going to do it right here in this where you don't you know, get a bunch of contamination anywhere and you don't have all of this stuff. But anyway, I sit here and do this. Somebody, you got that already done. Yep. Okay. And then I'm going to show you guys what I'm doing and then I'm going to step out of the way and let y'all do it. Is take, <coughs> take that sifter, sift some down in the center like that. I put it in there because you're going to get the flavor in there. Then, okay. And then what I do is I will season the bird on the outside, which we won't do right now. We'll do it in a minute. You guys do it here on the top, and we'll just do layers of them. Then season them up, and when I lay them in the cooker, I'm going to lay the breast side down. It's like you get the flavor coming out of the inside of the chicken going down into the breast and stuff here. We're doing pulled chicken, so it really doesn't matter what it looks like on the outside. Uh, I take the skin off the legs a lot of the time, the skin off the wings, you end up putting it back in there. A lot of this skin here, because it's so fatty and stuff in here, it will be kind of loose and everything in there. It doesn't have uh, the stiffness that the other pieces do because it kind of gets brittle where you can tear it or whatever, and it's chewable and stuff. 
this is more like gummy where you're just going to end up chewing on it a little bit and get the flavor out and then having to throw it out. But you can eat that part and everything. So that's what I'll do with that. Uh, but it's important, in my opinion, to make sure you get plenty of rub on the inside of the chickens. You know, everybody looks at you like real funny. Well, why are you going to do that? Well, that's where your flavor is going to penetrate down from the inside in there and everything. So that, that works out real good. Uh, some people are talking about, well, why don't you pull the skin back here and get down underneath? It's not that important. You're going to get the flavor in the chicken. And uh, if you get it down under here and you get it seasoned, it, it doesn't dry on there or cook on there solid because it's going to be real wet and moist in there and it's going to kind of look funky whenever you start pulling it. Well in there afterwards. Right? So you, you might as well just wait and check it on afterwards or whatever. I, I don't. I don't. I just do the cold chicken to give them the flavor of the chicken and everything. When you do competitions, do you do cook the whole chicken and take out the thighs? In competition, we just cook thighs. thighs. Yeah. I don't know why it's called a chicken competition anymore because it's a chicken thigh competition. Am I right, guys? Yeah. yeah. I mean, Randy pushes the number Does it? Okay. 40 shit. 40 shit. Yeah. So on the thighs only, but, <laughs> You know, KCBS requires six identifiable pieces of chicken. In Texas, if you're cooking under IBCA or Lone Star Barbecue Association or any of that competition, it's half chicken only, intact. Once it gets over 60 teams, then you turn in two half chickens. But normally it's one half chickens turned in in the competition, and that's all and everything. The judges have a knife and a fork. They cut a piece off. They throw the fork away. The next entry, they use a new fork. Uh, in Texas, you're going to get judged by about six judges with about 20 entries on the table. So your barbecue is going to have to taste good cold. It's not going to, they're not going to get it hot. And it's going to go from a preliminary table to a finals table or a semifinals table, depending on how many it is. Sometimes I've seen food set on the table for an hour and a half, being an hour and a half to two hours before it's finally judged. Don't ask me to judge chicken category, because I won't. I will not judge the kitchen, chicken category in a Texas cook-off, because it sets there so stinking long. I'm afraid somebody's going to get sick. Hadn't happened yet that I know of, but eventually somebody's going to get sick. They need to change their judging format on chicken and stuff like that, but they haven't done it yet. Anyway, some of you guys that want to jump in here and do this, seasoning the chickens and stuff like we're talking about. Uh, when you do competitions, do you normally do bones? Just the um, skin. He said do the center. I only do the thighs. On the thighs. Huh? I, thighs are thighs separately. Right, but I'm saying does he take the bone out and just... No, sir, I do bone in thighs. Bone in, skin on thighs. Some guys do fucking bone in. Yeah. <laughs> what is that little heart-shaped thing on the end there? Pulse nose. That one, that's the last piece over the fence. <laughs> We're using the uh, Rib Ranger spicy seasoning. Look at that squeeze. You see that squeeze? You see that squeeze the way you got it? <laughs> well, you had practice last night. <laughs> Damn, you brought your wife. <laughs> yours are training. I didn't think his ears would turn red. <laughs> One of the things I'm going to teach you right now that I just saw him do is a lot of times what I'll do is scoop this sifter into my rub. He just made the mistake of taking his hand he's handling the chicken with and putting it on the side of the deal. So now he can't scoop that into that box of rub anymore. Okay. Did anybody else catch that? What did he do? Uh, we were laughing about something else. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to me, that's very important on contamination and everything. So. <laughs> this thing is now we need a couple of class. Yeah. Um, it's just one of those things that I just happened to catch out of the corner of my eye just then. But yeah, he's still a virgin. Yeah. <laughs>
Oh, it's about an hour we're cooking. Five or six hundred birds, he'll get it right. Yes, sir. Please, no, please, no, please, no, please, no, please. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was clogged up or something. Then he had a good squeeze. It's quite warm. Takes two to spread the load. Quite warm. Sometimes. Wow, I didn't think you were going to hear me say that. We'd like the so uncut, did the camera. We'd like the uncut version of this. Wow. Hang on a second, got to change gloves because i got to move something here. Wow. We'd like, we'd like the uncut version mouth. of this video. <laughs> no, you oh, we have, we, we, have, <laughs> we have an interesting outtake reel, believe it. <laughs> wow. You got close that brisket with me? Sure. 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 Dave this morning. Dave went to get breakfast. <coughs> He's still in bed. Yeah. This truck's still sitting over in there. Did he leave? Oh. Want to go out in the pasture to get breakfast? Dave's rolling two Go out and found some fresh eggs out in the pasture? Yep. No, but it wouldn't help. So you don't have to clean this thing out. Yeah, you don't have to clean anything after. Yeah, yeah, as far as <laughs> health reasons, no, I'm not going to clean this thing out. I clean it out about every third year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Every yeah. one you tell me. On the weekends that I'm doing these big shows, yeah, I clean them out every weekend. Yeah. What do you clean the inside out with? Power wash it. The main thing, take all the high racks out. Don't. No, I'm, I'm power wash it with the racks in here first. So you can actually spray the water inside that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Where does the heat come from? Note from your wife, you got to get the other smoker going. She has a cake to bake. There is a. Uh, Okay. The trigger. You look right up there. There's like no, a I wouldn't. Yeah. And then you reach up under. How long is one of those uh, tanks of propane? Is that the most popular yeah. question this week? Yeah. Uh, I rode those 200 pound propane tanks and I can run between two and three weekends most yeah. times. Rock and I'm running 20, pretty much 24 hours around two to three days straight. Sometimes longer. So a total of like nine days? Last weekend in North Carolina, I paid $50 a tank for them to be filled up. So I paid as much as $100 for some of them to get the things filled up. So it just really depends here again, what part of the country are you in? Because I pay around $85 here at home to get them filled. And, uh, I was kind of surprised. How? What skin do you leave part of the skin in there? I do on this right here. Throw some paint in the way we'll tie it in here. Here we go. 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 What, what I'm supposed to be doing here? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Right. Okay, trash can. So this just Somebody find a trash box? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You guys make sure that uh, when you do the legs, you find these bones right here. Found it. Stuff in a box. This one just put this fat. You have better of them. Give me an empty pan. We're just using an empty pan right now. We're getting it. We're getting you trash. All right, we'll use an empty pan right now, and then we can always use it to put chicken in after we get through there. So grab me a pan. I'll pull the fat out or just leave it in. You won't eat it. Serve it. There we go. Right? Right. Sit there for hours and get every little piece of meat off.
Yeah. <laughs> That's custom made. That's custom made. <laughs> That's why I was wondering. Yeah, it's kind of custom made. Like kind of laid it down on a hot top, hot surface. There's no telling. There's no telling what may happen in our kitchens. Can't do that. Oh, yeah. One smooth motion like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. First. <laughs> How'd you know? Is it that obvious? I, I am bad. 
Now this is exactly what you do for catering events? Yeah, now every once in a while I kind of get extra energetic or if it's a small crowd or I'm doing a variety of places and uh, like I do for the, the, the different locations and if, if some of them order cakes. To give them extra flavors, I only do two flavors for those by the way. And I do it for the reason I can put two flavors in one pan. But I'll put half yellow and half chocolate in one pan. And the easiest thing to do is get you something that's about this deep this in height. And you put it underneath this end. And then you put your, your one batter in there. And then you mix your second batter. And as you start to pour it, you pull it out the bottom of it. And then you've got half, just half and half. It's not half and half. This way, if they just want chocolate, they can have chocolate. If they want huh. yellow, they can have yellow. If they want both, they can cut right down the middle where it blends together and have both flavors in one. They're the best of three worlds. This one is ready to go in the cooker. <clears throat> Let me rinse this off, and we will make the second butter. What temperature is this cooker? Feels nice and hot. We're trying to buff. This is set at 275, so. Not really level for that. Um, yeah, it's, uh, oh, it's down at 250 now. It's been open though, but down here it's it's only set on 275. Uh, let's do this. Unless it cooks hot. Smell really good. Pans are heating up in the smoker. Stick of butter. Stick of butter in each pan. Which pie filling? What's that? Which pie filling? This is cherry. Buffalo ribs. That's good for the top of the back. What's in the mixer? What's that? What's in the mixer? That's the gold. Yeah. So you spread it out or roll it out? Just dump it. We got the uh, we got twelve in the ready. Is this one stick of butter per pan? Yes. One stick of butter per pan? Yeah. You don't have to use a whole stick, it's just that they don't make any difference. That, that little extra butter flavor doesn't make any difference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, it would. Oh, you wrote, yes, it would. Uh huh. <laughs> yes, it would. <laughs> I'm going to divide this by four. You know, we tried to. <laughs> you did that. I know a of beer is a 12 pound. Now it's a 6 pound. <laughs> Is that before or after you drink the first six pack? Well, <laughs> depends what time it is. I'll see that liquor store cold. Well, you gotta get Grand Meunier or something for the cakes. You got any in the truck? Top ones are getting close. Top ones are getting close. When the tops are getting brown. Oh, okay. And I can, it looks like this one's getting close. Yeah. What temperature has this been all afternoon? 
You know what? Sure. Two fifteen. How long? How long have they been in? Uh, how they, long do they cook? It's going to take a little over an hour for most of them because we're, we've opened and closed the door so many times. Normally, I cook it about three fifty and takes about half an hour to 40, 45 minutes. So here it's going to take a little over an hour to leave for them. I got an email list from my buddies. Yeah, let, let me get a set up the TV. That one's fine. These are questions They're getting bankrupt. They're almost there. Oops, I'm sorry. Yes. Smell good. Mm. Just like this. Kind of like this. Yeah, this time of year, it's like Oh, yeah. Looks delish. Uh, yummy stuff. Smells good too. It looks good. It smells good. As Elton Brown would say, them are good eats. Yeah. Cool.